Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a video showing you how I do background pages on my journal for uh, a Tomoe River paper journal. And I store the one that where I do this type of journaling. I just put it in this traveler's notebook that I got at a BST group and it's an apple peg. Um, Traveler's Notebook, which I love, and I write in purple. And I have one, I've done other ones, um, and they've been much smaller, so this has been bigger. But I had this one that I did, just a bunch of journaling, a little bit different style. I did some stamping and kind of different, but it's t a Tomoy River paper. And then I did this one, and that this was my previous one. And this is more personal journaling um, about different things. A lot of it's uh, faith journaling. And um, I did backgrounds on this one too. And this one I did a little more. I put washi on a few pages here and there. I did a little bit here. Um, Sometimes I write a different direction. I did a little bit of drawing there. Um, a few little stickers, tiny bit of washi. So yeah, I did, oh, see, <laughs> the water really gets to these. Did a little decorating. So those were the two I had done previously, and they weren't really big. Um, this one is definitely a lot more pages. And I, I didn't do decorate any like other decorating. I just did the background. So I started this in April, 2020. Um, so it's been two years. And I haven't done a ton of writing, but quite a bit, just not a ton. And I didn't do any, de deco you know, decorative pe bits and pieces in it, just watercolor background. And, um, <clears throat> and I've shown before how I do this, and I do use a fountain pen with it. I'm not sure how another pen would work on Tomoe River paper that has had watercolor treatment. Haven't ever tried it, but it works, pretty much works just fine with this. So these are the pa some pages that are done, and I'll just show them to you. Just the colors, so you can see some of the color combos I use and how some of it looks. Sometimes it's different, like that. Um, really, it just depends um, what I do, how I do it. And I love this. Really like the effect of that one. I love this one too. This one is pretty dark for me doing a journaling page. I don't usually do that dark, but I do. I do like the way it turned out. Because I was getting too close to the edges, I had to go back and dry all this off. Because I thought it's too wet and I'm just going to hurt the string that was used. So I switched over to just doing, leaving this part. I like this one too. Love this one. I love pink and orange and I like the, the effects. This one is beautiful, I think. I like this one. See, I'm getting more to where I like them. Um, this one has kind of a silvery paint and then um, I used an ink color paint. I like that one too. I like the two tones. So I started doing a little bit of that, like this. And this is a silvery gray, and then this beautiful blue, and <clears throat> um, I like that one too. That's really cool. So I'm just going to do a few so you can see how I do them. I'm using these paints, so let me see. This, um, I think here, how many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, um, four and down is Prima's Decadent Pies, 
and then the next four and down is Prima, oh no, it's three. The next three and down is Prima Woodlands. The next three down is Jane Davenport, her gold case, from her gold case set. And then the last rows of three are Jane Davenport's teal case. And these are the color, the color swatch. It's gotten kind of messy because when I paint, I tend to splatter a little bit. So this is what I use. I have these cloths. You know, when you go to hotels and they, some of them have shoe cleaning cloths, that's what these are. And they're so heavy duty. And so I always use them. I've been using this one for a long time. And, and it's not like, it's still nice and thick and not damaged. And it's really fun to paint on. Or not to paint on, but to dab the paint with it. And look at how pretty it is just from doing, just from doing that. It's just covered and it's so cool. I really should like use it for something sometime when I'm, when I'm done with it. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I love using it. Then I just take some wax paper and I just doubled it over and I put one under on this side. And then I take the other wax paper and I'm going to trim this one because it's kind of long and crooked. And it's a little bit easier, I think, to handle if it's um, not so crazy. So I think I'll just do a little trimming so it's a little easier to handle. And I can just set it right there. Um, it's just to protect the paper on the other side of it, basically. So, like I said, I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to put one here. I guess that's a little bent. I don't need that bent. And then put one underneath that page. And then all I do is, <clears throat> I'm using a mop brush, just a, an inexpensive one, really. It's just a Craft Smart mop brush so it holds um, it's three quarter inch um, and it just holds a lot of water and that's why I use it because it you can just it just soaks up a lot of water in there which is really nice I, at least I think this is my mop brush I've been using it isn't but it's working really good this is my mop brush and this is what I usually use and this is a I can't read it. A one half inch mop brush. It isn't a real expensive one either, but I'm going to use this because that's what I would like to use. So I just have a jar of water and a spray bottle. So that's all I do. So I just spray this right here. Get it nice and wet so the paint will stick to it. And then I pick a color. I do have colors I stick to a lot just because I love certain of the colors that I have. So I do tend to use them a lot. And I'm just going to soak it, um, soak, I just put that to the side, but I use lots of water, just soak the brush really good. And then there, you can do different things. So this is what I've been doing lately, is I'm just doing kind of a like this okay so on one side right here so that's why I'm doing that just clean the brush off and get another color and I am going to get a reddish brown this is one of the Jane Davenport colors and then I'm just going to do this okay and then they'll kind of just do it like that okay that's all you got to do so th this is one technique that I use. And so I just bring this over here. And I just, really I just smush it. Um, and it will leak out a little bit. So right on top of this page, I'm just going to put this on part of it. And I'm just going to flatten and smush out. And then anything <clears throat> that leaks out is just going to leak onto here. All right, so then all I do is just put, bring the page and take it apart, okay? 
like this. There you go. Really light. Um, I did see, I see I got where I didn't want to go right in here. So it does a little bit too much. I really didn't want it to get touching too much there. So I don't dab it all right away because you don't get that um, effect that I like. So here's just a, a heat tool. So I'm just going to run it. Just excuse the noise while I do this. And um, yeah, just this. Start it, start it drying. That's the main thing. Just get it started. Okay. And then I just come back with um, this towel and I just dab. And then you can see, you can see that it leaves that little watermark stain anywhere that you dab like that. And I'm gonna do some more and that's going to whiten up. And I'm gonna dab a little bit of this blue that I took off onto here. All right, so then you just dry it up the rest of the way. It dries super fast. Whoops, I think I'm jiggling the camera everywhere. All right, so that just, that will dry fast. And just lift this up. If you hold it like this, it's gonna dry quickly. Okay, so, and I really feel like um, the paper, it's already soft paper because it's got a coating on it, but I feel like when I paint it, it feels even softer, like, I don't know, almost like cloth. It's just cool. Okay, so I'll show you a couple of other techniques, um, different ways you can get different things than what we got here. So let's try, let's try something new on this. Um, I'm gonna do purple. I love the purple so much. It's so pretty. And what I'm gonna do is just do like this. Dabs of purple off of my brush. Okay, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna put a lighter purple in there too. So we have two different shades of purple. Cause I think that will be really pretty. And then this is on the dry, just dry paper, okay? So I think that's good. Let's get a little out here. Sometimes I miss the edges. All right, so just rinse that out. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my spray bottle and I'm just gonna spray the paper. And then you're just gonna let the paint react to the paper. And you can cover it over right away with the other sheet, or you can just wait and watch it till it gets to where you like it. And I kind of like to wait and see how it's gonna react. Like the water is pooling right here, um, and it's moving, so it's still moving. So I just kinda, I'm just gonna wait gonna let it move around a little bit before I do anything else to it. I just think it's so pretty. I feel like this didn't get enough anything in it. So let's do this one a little bit more because you don't want it too dark. So let's just, just let it sit there a second. And then I'm going to fold this one over just like this and I'm just going to press it lightly. I don't want it to bleed out too much. I mean, it is a little bit, it's just a tiny bit. All right, I just wanna make sure it sops up fairly good here. And let's see what, let's see what it looks like now. All right, come on. Okay. Just going to carefully 
see that. Yeah, and this one really sopped into the, really sopped in here. So I need to take care of that. Okay. Yeah, I don't like it to seep in so much. It's just, it's not good for the binding to get overly saturated. So then you just come back up here and I'm gonna get this here first. I'm gonna make sure I, I get that dry. And then let's just go here. I'm gonna kind of push this off. I didn't really want all of that there. So let's just, <laughs> let's just push it off a little. Let's do this. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna do a little scratching of this, right? Okay. Let's do a little more. Now let's come over here. This page is really light. And then I can kind of look here and make sure that that dry. And this here. Okay, so yeah, I didn't want it to seep in here. Um, and if you go back, you can see if it did come through. Um, it looks like it didn't, because if it did, I I want to dry that because I don't want I don't want the wet coming through. So I'm just gonna do a quick check. Okay, and sometimes here too, you'll you'll get some of the wetness seeping through. That's from previous times. So that's another technique that I think is really pretty. So you can kind of see some of where the water spots were. Another is I like to combine <clears throat> certain colors seem to go really nicely together. And I, and I experiment and then, you know, that way I can kind of find out what colors I like. Um, another thing, let's do again without spraying this first. And let's take another combination. Here's a really, uh, this should be like a maroon. And I'm just going to kind of do an ombre. And then it'll go lighter and lighter the further you get down here. Okay. And I do like to combine a color with this. And um, oranges, I like the oranges really well with this sort of color. It is a combination I like. So I'm just gonna show you some of the combinations that I like. So what I'm gonna do is just come and do kind of an edge, okay? Just like this. And then I'm just gonna, see that's the thing, just just experiment. It doesn't have to be, you don't know till you do it, if you're gonna like it. <laughs> that's kind of how I operate with this. So then I'm just gonna take my bottle, and this time, I think I'm gonna go like this and make sure I don't get this part wet. And so you can paint first and then do your water after or whatever, whatever you want, really. Or you can do your water first and put your paint on after. So now you see here how this is melding together. So I'm going to just lay this down right here. And this is really wet, so let's just, and usually I 
take and I smoosh it out, like I go this direction, because then you keep it from getting into the middle. And I'm just gonna do it part way like this. And then I'm just going to flatten it with my hand. Because as you can see, it does wanna, it likes to leak out. Of course, it did right there. All right, so let's see what happens. It's fun because you know what? You're just experimenting and trying different things and seeing how they are working. And I like to do that. There we go. Feels like there's a lot of water here, but look, we got it before it got to the edge, which is perfect. So let's try this. <laughs> It's going everywhere. I'm gonna make sure I didn't get into my other color. So just go like that. Go like this. Here too. Just dry it up a little. Okay. And then come here. I'm going to smush it down again. Okay. Bring it back up. Okay. There we go. So there's another look, and you can see that both pages are different in this case. Um, and pink, and I like a brilliant pink and an orange together. This was a little bit of a darker tone. But another color combination that I like, and this time I'm going to spray my paper. So I'm just gonna hold my hand here just to kind of keep most of the water over there. And you do want to get it good and wet because you want your colors to grab. So here's one of my favorite shades of green. And I'm just gonna do some dabbing. But leave some spaces, okay? Just leave some spaces in there. All right, and I do like a deep yellow with this color. So I'm going to choose a nice deep yellow, kind of a buttery yellow or something. I don't know. I just like it. It's a nice golden, golden yellow. And I, I really love this color with this. So just go see these blank white areas. Just go ahead and kind of dab in those areas. Okay, like that. All right. And we're just gonna lay it down like this. I do wanna make sure I didn't get it onto the next page. I didn't, okay. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lay it down. Let's, let's just let it sit there a second. So pink and orange, I really like and I like that green, that more, I don't know, avocado green or whatever. I like that muted green with um, yellow. 
and what other combos I love like the dark um, ink which is um, what is that called a lot of times Payne's gray like Payne's gray so yeah so like these two colors I like together and any combo of like this and this and then you can see like these two would look good together. I just kind of look at my colors and I and I try to think what would look pretty together. Like purple, purple and this would be pretty. I don't do a lot of blues. It's not always easy to find a blue that I like. Um, I do have one blue that's, it's not a thaleo blue, but it is a really pretty one. And maybe I'll do that next because I don't think I did the blue. I did do a bluish here. So let's just kind of take a look at this and let's see what it looks like. I don't know until I open it. <laughs> Let us see. Oh, I just love this color combination so much. And then just look at all this in here. So I'm going to try and maybe I can push it down a little like this, okay? And then maybe I can do that here too. There we go. Just a little. Not too much. Okay. Oh, I really, really like this. Okay. So, oh, beautiful, just beautiful. Okay, so see how gorgeous this, oh my gosh, I love this. That's what I like. I just love that spotting when you can get it. I think it's so pretty. So we're just gonna do one more and then I'll just let that be it because I think I keep shaking the table when I'm drying my paper and it's noisy. So let's try this. I am going to use this gorgeous silvery gray and um, I am going to spray my paper first. All right, so I have this gray in here. It's called Earl, Earl Gray, but it's just the color, you know, that Prima has named there, named it. And it's just, when it dries, it has a silvery sheen to it, and it is just stunning. And it's really pretty if you pale if you pair it with a dark color. And I'm just going to keep layering it on a little bit so it shows up a little better because it does, I can see it, but I don't know if you can actually see it in the camera. So I'm just gonna do that. Okay, so then I'm gonna take this blue that I love and we're going to use that. So I'm going to just bring it here because I don't want it, I really don't want it to pool too much. I want it to like go out this way. So I'm going to just look at this beautiful, beautiful blue. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. And I want it dark, so that's why I'm doing that. So that's dark. All right, so now, in this case, we are going to push it out this way. So I think what I'm gonna do, I just have a feeling it's going to be 
kind of messy. So I'm just gonna gently do this because I don't want it, I don't want it coming that way. <laughs> not, I'm, I'm losing what I want. I want it to go this way. Eh, that's not right. All right, we're just gonna do this. There's too much wet. All right, so let's put it down. Put this here. And then you're just gonna smush out, smush out, because I really wanna, hopefully I'm preventing it from getting into that silvery gray too much. Okay, bring this up, perfect. And let's open this up and see what happened. If it did it what I, what I wanted it to do. Not too bad, it spread more than I wished, but let's see. So I don't know if you can see it, um, but there is like a silvery sheen from that gray and then this beautiful, beautiful blue on top of it. And that's just, I love that look so much. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that little, little tutorial. <laughs> and I'm sorry for camera shaking and the sound of the heat gun but I hope that, um, that that helped. All right, thanks, bye.